possible. It's a pleasure to invite you on Frankly Speaking and I Ms. hope Vera. you will uh, speak from your heart and speak frankly on the issues. Mr. Venka, I speak from my heart only. Mr. Venka and I do, we are talking at a time when our campuses are once again in the throes of protests in the throes of tension. Uh, we saw it in February last year in JNU. Today we are seeing it in the Delhi University North Campus. And uh, it's, uh, let me immediately start by asking you about what's happening over the last two weeks, starting with the protest over Umar Khalid's right to freedom of speech. Umar Khalid, we all know last year at JNU was the man who talked about uh, judicial killing of Afzal Guru. He talked about his desh ke tukde tukde honge. Do you think such people have a right to freedom of speech? Not at all. First of all, they should not have been invited. And when they are invited, naturally there will be protests. And what is uh, objectionable in this protest, I am not able to understand. And moreover, please note, there are around 7,000 institutions in the country. The trouble is in five, six places. And we are now trying to highlight it as if everything has gone wrong with the universities. Uh, Mr. Venkaya Naidu, the question is, uh, is, there, is there a blurring of lines somewhere between nationalism that we talk about and the nationalism and freedom of speech that these people are talking about? Is the liberal lobby, the same award wapsi lobby, not guilty of not opposing Shazia Ilmi's, uh, uh, you know, when she was denied an invitation to speak at uh, Jamia Milia University, uh, where she wanted to speak on triple talaq. The entire program was pressurized, changed to women empowerment. Do you think the liberal lobby should have raised their voice Will against they, that as well? I did not expect it because they are not liberal lobby at all. They are lobbies for a particular ideology, which is a wrong ideology, which doesn't suit India. Secondly, they are known for their double standard. They have been doing it, Salman uh, Rashdi se lekar, Taslima se lekar, abhi jo, Pakistan ka wakya na unka Tariq Fateh and now latest is uh, Shajia so they have been adopting these double standards and uh, that's why we call them as pseudo-secularists so you are saying there is a wrong ideology which is the ideology that you are calling wrong any ideology which do not accept India as a nation which do not accept Indian ethos Indian values is a wrong ideology uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Venkaya Naidu, the question is also about the ABVP hooliganism. The question that is asked often of the BJP is, even if there are protests, even if there are uh, differences in opinion about a particular section of uh, uh, the university crowd wanting Umar Khalid to speak, does the ABVP have the right to get to violence and does it have state protection it, it, to it do is, that? It is wrong that ABVP uh, indulge in hooliganism. I am a product of ABVP. The Indian Finance Ministry is a product of ABVP. We feel proud of our past association with the ABVP. If any incident wherein ABVP or SFI or ASF is involved in some violence, that has to be taken care of. The law will take its own course. But to brand ABVP hooliganism and all, they have got a right to protest. And the university atmosphere is going to be vitiated. If somebody is going to come there and speak for Ajayi of Kashmir, who is an integral part of India, any patriotic student and citizen actually will protest. And these protests are happening because outside interference. It's not uh, done by the students. Some people coming from outside trying to create disturbances. Others are opposing it. That's why the so-called conflict has come. So you are saying it's outsiders who have a hand in Def the... Undoubtedly, ma'am, you see Hyderabad, you see Jadavpur, you see JNU, you see Ramjas College now. What is it Rahul Gandhi has to do with this? What is it Raja has got to do with this? What is Sitara Maituri has to got to do with this? What is Mayavati's and others have got to do with this? They make political pilgrimage of your favorite incident and they want to express solidarity without knowing what they are doing. Expressing solidarity with Umar Khalid means expressing solidarity with Afzal Guru. He want to call him as a matriar and then he want to celebrate his Jayantis and anniversaries and then slam India, Indian constitution, Indian people. This is the solidarity these people are expressing. But for the political interference, the issue would have died on the very first day itself. So okay, somebody invited, others are protesting, the issue is over. 
सो यू आर अक्यूजिंग सीताराम येचुरी राहुल गांधी एंड अदर लीडर्स फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट पार्टीज लाइक डी राजा ऑफ एक्चुअली इंटरफियरिंग इन स्टूडेंट पॉलिटिक्स एंड ट्राइंग टू गिव इट अ पोलिटिकल डिरेक्शन दे आर गिविंग हैविंग फेल्ड ऑन द इलेक्टर फ्रंट हैविंग बीन मार्जिनाइज द नेशनल पोलिटिकल ज्योग्राफी दे आर नाउ बेंट अपॉन डाइवर्टिंग द अटेंशन एंड रेकिंग अप कॉन्ट्रोवर्सीज हेयर एंड देयर and then take advantage to defame the prime minister defame the india government but they will fail because they have taken a wrong cause and they have taken a wrong route mr venkaiah i do let me bring to your notice that a senior abvp member has reported to have said during the tiranga march that if anyone raises a finger on this country that finger will be cut does nationalism allow anybody to no, make not such at all. statements see such, such statements are made by some boys or some activists somewhere they are they are not the philosophy of the abvp and they are not acceptable to government of india also you you have no right to take law into your hands that's an emotional pent up but even then i don't justify it at all why are you singling out only the statements of such people what are the slogans that are being raised what are the placards that are being exhibited by the so called the con the congress the communist the communalist and the so called pseudo secularist they formed an alliance that's what uh, my friend uh, Arun Jaitley has called an alliance of uh, subversion, and they are coming out with all these things, and then media is giving them some coverage, and they are feeling happy. But outside Delhi, go to Madura, go to Agra, go to any place. Nobody is taking care of what is these people are saying and what what is they are observing, because they have nothing to do with the ground level realities. These are all politically inspired protests, and they are dying. They have, you, you, nobody is talking about Hyderabad University now. nobody is talking about even the past uh, jnu also you've experienced it first hand at ftii when rahul gandhi landed there and made his speech even making uh, ftii rahul gandhi never days wherever there is a photo opportunity is landing himself there and afterwards becoming a laughing stock let me make it very clear that's why one of the senior congress leader uh, has uh, said that uh, he has to mature himself first that's a message from the senior congress leadership you request a congress leader of delhi who was a former chief minister twice or thrice with all the experience take her to the other state and then declare her as the chief minister of that state and then take a yatra of 612 kilometers or whatever it is and suddenly you drop her and then suddenly you ride on the bicycle back seat of a bicycle of other party what is this is it politics uh mr venkaiah and i do mr sitaram yechuri uh, of the cpim has said that hamara nationalism is we are indian not who is a hindu and he said this at the protest march at the university do you think bringing in nationalism versus hindu is deliberately pointed at taking away your platform of a hindu rashtra why is we Sita never Ram speak of hindu rashtra at all hindu according to us is not a narrow religious concept Hindu is a broader cultural identity of this nation, ma'am. Shall I tell Sita Ram Yechuri there is a Hindu newspaper which is a little pro CPM Hindu. Are they communal? There is a Hindustan Times newspaper which is a little pro Congress. Are they communal? Hindustan Akbar in Hindi me. Are they communal? HMT Watch hai Hindustan Machine Tools. Ye naam aaj paaye jine nahi diya, nahi to Narendra Bhai ne nahi diya. Hindustan Shipyard, Hindustan Airlines Limited. I can go on saying so many things like that. Don't try to make Hindu into a narrow this thing. And secondly, nationalist. What is nationalism? Loving the nation. What is nation? Nation consists of all people, irrespective of caste, creed, sex, religion, and region. India is one. We are saying India is one. They are saying Kashmiri ka jaad deo. they are saying bastar ka jaad deo they are saying something else that is not indian that is not nationalism mr sitaram yechuri unfortunately siding with those elements uh, mr naidu the also the other question is that in the political discourse now a party like the national conference has come out and said that anybody who talks about sedition is addressing an archaic law the law of sedition should itself be abolished because it's now being applied to umar khaled the the man uh in the university in the jnu who talked about secession of uh, kashmir who talked about the self expression of the kashmiri uh you know identity do you think the sedition law Mr. should be abolished identity. sedition law what is it farooq abdullah ji who was union minister number of times has done or he has forgotten 
about the evil effects of Sajjan Allah. Mr. Omar Abdullah was also Union Minister. Why he has forgotten? Why he was silent at that time? Now why he is reacting violently? This is double standard. It suits him politically for the timing. That's why he is making this observation. And they call BJP and PDP coming together is the joining hands of communal forces. BJP and uh, NC, National Conference joining together, no problem. It is very secular. This is a peculiar way of secularism of these parties. Just because they are out of power? That's all. They are out of power. That's why they are struggling hard to prove their existence. That's why they are making such comments. Otherwise, if tomorrow if the situation comes and you NC and come, will be able to come to nearer to central government, they will be more than happy. They say, no, we have done it in the national interest. They said it also. They justified earlier. Now, how can they criticize? Mr. Naidu, also the question is, if the platform of universities is given to somebody like an Omar Khalid, who talks about uh, Bharat ke tukde tukde honge, then tomorrow will the liberal lobby also propagate the cause of Saeed Ali Shah Gilani and Mirwais Umar Farooq to come and use such platforms to address universities? They students? made a similar attempt, I am told, long back in uh, Sri Ram College, to invite uh, the person, separatist person, and then he was tarred. My point is, you are going against the national sentiment. Ma'am, expressing a different opinion is different. Dissent is understandable, is agreeable. Disintegration is not at all acceptable to the people of the country. They should understand this. Nowhere in the world, any country allows such a, a what you call luxury of a expression where you can speak against the unity and integrity of that nation. Only in India, and only such people, they make such expressions. And the Kash so, what, what Kashmir is ke baare mein kya problem tha? What is the identity of the Kashmir? Who is talking about it? Kashmir identity is such, I am telling you today. That Mr. Chidambaram and other Congress leaders also remember, the other day Mr. Chidambaram said, I asked for an explanation of the Congress, Congress is silent on that. Chidambaram said, this Kashmir is nearly lost. lost. Number two, he said seven million Kashmiris are feeling alienated. Number three, he said the central government is using brutal force. He was the union home minister. He knows the sensitivity of the situation. Kashmir is that and what is Kashmir, I will tell him by giving three examples what happened yesterday, day for yesterday. Three examples are Mr. Uh, um, Mir Ahmad Riyadh, Lance Naik, he was matriated by the terrorists. He was brought back to his home. Thousands of Kashmiri people, I don't use the language of Hindu Muslims, but Kashmir is mostly that side is Muslims only. They all came to take part in the last rites with a tricolor flag there on the body. Secondly, on the day of uh, Mahasivaratri, Herat, they call it in Kashmir, the Muslims went and uh, repaired an abandoned temple of the Kashmiri Pandits and then posted slogans also saying Kashmir is incomplete without Kashmiri Pandits. Please come and join for the next Herat. Let us celebrate Mahasivaratri. That's a, so yesterday, my own ministry, I was reviewing the Smart City Mission. The Commissioner of Srinagar told me, because we want people's participation in the programs, PM wants people's participation. Four lakh suggestions have come for improvement of Srinagar into a smart city. This is the, this is the participation of the Kashmiri people and they believe in the unity and integrity. Handful of people who are throwing stones at the behest of separatists or at the behest of other people and our neighbor who is aiding, abetting, funding, training terrorists, he is trying to do mischief and we should not be carried away by such things. That's why yesterday when I heard this four lakh people have given their suggestion, I said from, from stone throwing now to stone laying, this is the mood of Kashmir now. Uh, Mr. Venkai Naidu, let's bring up two issues. One is the video of Gurmeher Kaur, which, uh, you know, on social media received a lot of attention. The fact that she said that her father was martyred not by Pakistan, but by war. She is a peacenik. Do you think somebody like her has a freedom of speech, freedom of expression, or do you think she should be trolled by the social media? See, everybody, every Indian who believes that he is an Indian has a right to express his feelings or her feelings. This young girl, she also has got every right. But uh, she has taken a, what do you call, um, a wrong analogy saying that my father is not killed by Pakistan, it's, he was killed by war. People were stunned. Maybe it is because of her innocence or not being able to understand the sentiments of people, she might have posted it. Later, she has seen the uh, social media reaction and then um, 
rightly now she has withdrawn and then she want to concentrate on uh, her studies and we must uh, respect her wish and then should not go on talking about her but uh, do you think minister of state for home kiran rijiju should have interfered into this should have tried to put pressure because remember there are rape threats that were given to this girl there is no question of interfering or uh, putting pressure on anybody on whom the point is there is a threat she she alleged that there is threat it's very serious matter she is a daughter of india and then law must take uh, action and investigate and then find out who are the persons responsible and give them strictest possible punishment similarly an abvp girl i don't want to name her she made a complaint that she was molested police has that, that complaint also so that also has to be verified and investigated and action has to be taken you cannot have double standards simply because somebody is more vocal on social media other is silent you cannot differentiate my point is these things are wrong this is not the way but social media is social media it's under nobody's control you know it is no under nobody's control but my point is we have our sympathies if at all she is somebody has made such remarks or given such threats that should be inquired into the minister also assured that they are being inquired into and action will be taken but and when bo- kiran bo- rijiju said the cases, that her father's uh, soul would be watching her and weeping should he have said it because he is the minister I, I, of state for home remember i don't, I don't want he to he is somebody who's controlling I, the law I, enforcing I, I, agencies see, see. the delhi police reports to the home ministry no, in new delhi i don't want to comment on the comments made by my colleagues and further add to the controversy if any the girl wanted her to be left alone let us leave her alone and issue please try to understand i appeal to all including times now other channels also the issue is not guru meher the issue is umar khalid the issue is azad kashmir ko azadi dena the issue is separatist tendencies and separatist forces let us focus on that okay my my last question on this entire issue is there is a video that has been posted by a jawan fighting on the border he is posted in uri siram gorde is his name and he is talked about anybody who is talking about azadi inside india the danger is from them while our jawans are fighting on the line of control and taking the bullets from pakistani rangers as well as terrorists how do you think his freedom it's of a, speech it's, is it's, affected it's, it's quite but natural the jawans who leave their families behind and go there and then work there in that uh, what do you call um, hostile environment you know the height you know the temperature you know the circumstances there etc they are fighting for the country they are dying for the country and if somebody trying to ridicule them or somebody try to say that we are using brute force brute force for what using keeping the country united they are making sacrifice and you are ridiculing so naturally there will be reaction they have a right to freedom of definitely. speech definitely everybody everyone has got a right to freedom of uh, speech and now the the their problem with the pseudo secularists and the communists and Congre- communists is that they want to have selective freedom one way and they want what sort of freedom they want today you have an example of a bihar congress minister sri mastan saying that calling prime minister is an exercise calling prime minister is a decade and asking the people to beat the prime minister's photo with chappals they did it also so far neither the congress leadership or the other seniors they have not even clarified the position or condemned him or pulled him up or they should have dropped him immediately because such people are unfit to be in the politics of the country and this speaks of the level do you think nitish kumar should have taken action against such a minister well, nitish kumar is helpless for nitish kumar to be frank he has disowned the statement he, he has condemned it of course in mild terms that much he has done he cannot drop a minister because his very survival depends on the mercy of the congress and lalu ji mr venkaiya naidu let me now draw your attention to the entire issue of demonetization and the impact that it has had on the public the growth figures have come 7% is the growth rate and already there seems to be jubilation on the part of the government uh, celebrating the fact that it's within the a limit that you would have expected and not the limit that dr manmohan singh uh, the former prime minister had prophesied he had said 1 to 2% uh, decline in growth would take place what's your response to the congress party now which was a huge detractor of the entire demonetization move see they have got every right to criticize demonetization but they have not they welcomed it later they started finding fault then they gave a call for bharat band 
then they gave call for across rally all it has flapped it has failed congress communist trinamool and all and later they called it as a loot and plunder by manmohan singh loot and plunder you can say demonetization is a wrong move or an unwise move you call it as a loot and plunder and that too statement coming from a person who was a silent uh, presiding officer of a loot and plunder of this nation's wealth whether it is be coal scam a 2g scam or a commonwealth is scam you call anything there was a scam scam everywhere so you can't expect a better statement from them as for the economy is concerned i have always have the view i am not an expert that manmohan singh and chidambaram are failed expert, failed um, economists you can't expect better than because they have, he held every position in the country he was uh, he was finance secretary he was economic advisor he was reserve bank governor he was finance minister he was prime minister still what has happened to the economy when we inherited the government from uh, economy from the the upa fiscal deficit revenue deficit trade deficit current account deficit above all trust deficit from that thanks to the leadership provided by sri narendra bhai modi and the shrewd way of handling by my colleague sri arun jetri see the economy even after demonetization if the growth rate is going to be around 7% or 7.1% this is not what venkai naidu is saying you might have seen the other day imf statement and then you have seen what uh, sekhan das the secretary of government have said it's a happy news not only for the government the entire country is celebrating it because certain apprehensions were created by our detractors political detractors like congress and communists is going to be doom as i told you he has used the word loot and plunder people were expecting a bigger uh, this thing but uh, they were saying it will be 6.4 or 3.5% as manmohan singh himself said one or two point less etc that did not happen manufacturing sector is picking but up but let me let me point out uh, the figures given by uh, mr p chidambaram were that if there is a 1% decline in gdp growth it will be a loss of 150000 crore to the country now we are seeing a decline of from 7.4 to 7% Uh, that yeah. itself is about forty-five thousand crore loss. So there is a loss to the economy. Are you glossing over that? My fact? point is, wait for the gain, ma. Wait for the gain. Now they are also having vicarious satisfaction in criticizing us and coming out with open statement. What is it they have achieved? Or the fourteen lakhs, or fifteen lakhs, or sixteen lakhs crore money has come back to the banks? This is what they are saying. Huh? What I am saying is, they are right. figures i don't have exact figures reserve bank of india will alone will alone will be able to explain better they will be doing it in due course of time they are in the process of totally examining it but the money has come with address jo paisa bank mein aaya wo pata ke sath aaya uska pata kya hai uska pita kon hai uska pati kon hai uske sath bank mein aaya na now the scrutiny is on 18 lakh accounts have been now identified out of that 5 lakh people have been given email to explain once that explanation comes how much saving will be there how much additional money will come by way of uh, uh, tax or by way of uh, what do you call um, penalty that will be known later let us not come to the conclusions too early to come to hasty conclusions are i am we are not uh, jubilant that we are happy undoubtedly but at the same time let us wait okay mr naidu let me draw your attention to your own ministry as the information and broadcasting minister you have to deal with somebody like pehlaj nilani and that is also the bane of the entire film fraternity which has to deal with mr pehlaj nilani now the latest controversy is about this film called lipstick under my burqa that is a film which requires certification from the central board of film certification look at the grounds on which mr pehlaj nilani has denied certification to that film he says the story is lady oriented their fantasy about life it contains sexual scenes abusive words audio pornography and is a bit sensitive lady oriented films will not be given certification is you that the government policy see, as a minister i am not supposed to sit on judgement on this there is a censor board after that there is a tribunal then there is an appellate tribunal they will be looking into this i don't want to get into controversies but at the same time suppose suppose the cinema was cleared hypothetically i am saying i have not seen it i don't know contents also huh? the lipstick under burqa the very heading it irritates some people 
and then it will, there is a scope. You have not read fully what he has said, according to the media. It, it has got the communal angle also. Burka. You don't wear burka. So moral right? policing by but, the government and so, Pehlaj but Milani? But somebody has to go through all this sensitivity some Otherwise, if you hurt the other religion and they try to hurt you, and then tomorrow I am pulled up in parliament. So there has to be some accountability. A big debate is needed. That's what I'm, I talked to my officers also, told them. Is there a need for certification, censor or not? Should be free, so that one you 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 produce a film and accuse some other community, and there there are rights in the area, and then government is held responsible. So there has to be some regulation at some level. What sort of regulation? This is under discussion, and then what are the improvements to be made? Shyam Banagar committee has made some recommendations. Mudgal committee has made some recommendations. They are all under study, and I hope but that they've we'll been be under able. study for the last. What do you take time? Months. You can't simply say like this, like this freedom of expression. I have freedom, so I will produce film of my choice in whatever manner. So at times when we are talking about freedom of speech, from universities to films to the censor board, it's all about freedom of speech one statement from you on what you think is freedom of speech and expression. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression should be there for one and all without any discrimination. One rule for Jamia, another rule for Ramjas College, one rule for uh, Umar, another rule for uh, uh, Shaji Ailmi should not be there. We should speak with one voice. At the same time, freedom of expression also followed by responsibilities, not to hurt others not to create problems to others. You, are ev you have got every right. This is not a mercy or charity given by the Narendra Modi government or this party or that party. It is enshrined in the Indian constitution and Indian culture, Indian ethos always believes in, you, might, you know the Charvaka, the arguments he had, uh, even uh, uh, Mandana Misra, Shankaracharya, all these debates, they, they went on. That's the tradition of our country. But we are living in a democratic country, democratic system, where any small provocation is regulating trouble. So the government has a responsibility to have some regulation. Even if you are going out of my house, 30 Abdul Karam Road, you want to go left, the other man want to come right, both of you come straight, then you will meet there. So there has to be some regulation, even on traffic also. Similarly, with regard to Article 19.2 also, there were reasonable restrictions or responsibilities or obligations imposed by the Constitution. Okay. Let us all be committed to freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of writing, but within the permissible constitutional limitations. On that note, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Venkaya Naidu, for speaking straight from the heart and taking every issue head on. Thank, thank you. you very much for joining thank me on Thank You Speak. Thank you. Namaste.